Hey friends, it's Alicia from MobilityMastery.com and this is episode three in our Fast Fascia Facts series. If you're landing on this video for the first time and you've never seen me, first of all, welcome. Um, if you missed the first two episodes, we will link to them below because I am gonna be referencing them uh, today. But the way this is gonna work is I'm listing three fascia facts and then we're gonna talk about why they matter and some of the implications for your health or you know healing trauma or injury um, challenges and also how to use them to get where you want to go with your mind and body so number one here your lymph system lives inside of your superficial superficial your super fascia your superficial fascia <laughs> um, so this is a really good thing to be aware of if you're somebody who is either trying to detox or you like learning about toxicity and how to detox because there are pretty big implications here for for that and also using fascia release and your knowledge about fascia and how it works to actually optimize your lymph system so you can detox better uh, so i'm going to circle back around when we kind of like dive into um, the implications here, but just a couple other facts for you related to this one. So the superficial fascia just means it's the part of the fascial system that lives closest to the surface. So closest to your skin. So there's kind of a layer of fascia there, um, closest to the skin that is different than the deeper layers of fascia that say wrap the um, the muscle fibers, you know, deep inside the muscle belly, and then also very different from, say, the visceral fascia that wraps your organs. So your lymph system lives inside that superficial fascia. Um, and of course, you have lymph nodes throughout your whole body, and then lymph vessels that um, are used by your body to move lymph fluid and toxic waste basically so to move toxic waste out of your body um, which you definitely want so if your superficial fascia becomes tight and congested you might infer from that that it could affect your lymph system so like i said we'll circle back around and talk about the implications but um, that's definitely one i think we should all be aware of in this modern world because we're encountering quite a few toxins on a daily basis all right, number two, uh, fascia has 10 times as many proprioceptors as uh, muscle or more than muscle fiber, 10 times as many. Uh, this has huge implications for movement potential, whether you're an athlete or not, but especially if you're an athlete. Uh, so proprioception is the ability of your brain and body to detect you know, where your body is in physical space, what kind of um, space you're in, and then it conducts movement, but it also assesses your posture. So how things are stacked, how things are aligned, and then proprioceptors are the nerve messengers or signals that conduct movement in whatever space you're in. So, you know, right now I'm standing barefoot on a carpet. My body knows that. Um, it knows how to conduct movement. I'm talking to a camera, my hands are moving. So um, it's proprioceptors and proprioception that is responsible for all of my movements right now. But if you're an athlete, it's responsible for um, initiating movement, whether you're a gymnast or a runner or um, mountain biker or whatever. And so the fact that you have 10 times as many proprioceptors within your fascia than muscle fibers, to me, a pretty good thing to be aware of if you want to optimize your movement potential and like i said we'll circle back around so number three fascia has its own pain receptors so this is hugely important i believe um, when it comes to understanding pain and pain in the body how we interpret pain how we feel pain and what you know why we feel pain uh, so this almost explains itself i think as far as the fact goes and we'll circle back around because I think the implications here are huge. And this is something I have already talked about on the channel. I've actually talked about all of these, but never together um, like this. So uh, why you might want to think about 
your lymph system living inside your superficial fascia. Well, pretty much, I would say 100% of us living in the Western world, uh, the developed world, no matter how healthy you think you are, how healthy you try to be with your eating, with non-toxic personal care products and non-toxic things in your home. I mean, I try so hard not to bring toxic stuff into my home and it's still happening all the time because first of all, it's really expensive to buy 100% organic, non-toxic everything in your house from furniture to um, computers. I mean, even this adhes adhesive blackboard is semi-toxic, right? Um, so we are going to encounter toxicity on a pretty much a daily basis. So you want a, a lymph system that is optimized to actually move those toxins out um, as you encounter them rather than them getting backed up. Uh, and so what I guess I would want you to think about right now, whether you're brand new to this channel or not, is if you've already been working with fascia release, like using my, my methods, my techniques here on Mobility Mastery, um, or if you're gonna start using them, uh, you can kind of start to assess the health of the superficial fascia related to the lymph system by tuning into how that superficial fascia feels. So since it's closest to the skin, you're gonna notice that first impact, say when you get on a roller or first you know, feeling when you compress your forearm, say, or if you're doing um, work up here with the lymph nodes, like I've put out some videos on lymph drainage for the neck. Um, so you know, it's gonna feel tender, it's gonna feel um, more painful at the surface and kind of that tender sore kind of way. Um, but like I said, at the surface, and then of course, if there's inflammation at the surface, that's a very, um, you know, good, not, not a good sign, but it's a sign that your lymph system could be backed up um, and it's not draining properly and you are inflamed at the superficial level of your fascia. Um, so lots of implications here. I am gonna ask to hear from you at the end of this video because I'd love to hear your thoughts related to your body based on these facts. Um, and then the implications here for proprioceptors and proprioception. <laughs> I mean, it, to me, it's massive. Your movement potential depends on healthy fascia, fascia that can glide appropriately, that can cue movement effectively and efficiently and very quickly. If you're an athlete that wants to move quickly um, and feel like you have more power with less effort to produce that power, then you're gonna to wanna to make use of this. So basically the healthier your fascia is, the healthier um, or the more effective your proprioception is gonna be and the better, more efficient your movement is gonna be. And then something you definitely wanna consider no matter your age right now is that proprioception is gonna matter probably more to you when you're older because this is the thing that helps us you know, regulate balance and mobility as we age, right? So the ability to get up and down off the floor, to have balance when we walk. Um, most of us, myself included right now, probably taking that for granted right now, but I've worked with you know quite a few uh, older folks in my private practice who just wish so bad that they had started 10 years earlier, or 20 years earlier, optimizing their fascial system so they can prevent that from ever even being an issue and you absolutely can. So it's not something you wanna let build up and basically the more unhealthy your fascia, um, the less proprioceptive capacity you're gonna have as a human being. All right, and number three, fascia has its own pain receptors. So this one's huge, right? And automatically I think about all the people out there, maybe you're one of them experiencing mystery pain, right? Or um, pain that's now getting labeled things like um, myofascial pain syndrome or fibromyalgia um, or uh, like there are even things like scleroderma and stuff like that, which have other, other things going on as well. But the fact that your fascia has its own pain receptors is really fascinating to me. And I believe it helps to explain a lot of medically so-called inexplicable conditions like myofascial pain syndrome, right? Um, you know, in the, in the Western medical model, they're labeling these things autoimmune and saying, you know, your body's attacking itself um, and that's why you're having this condition. 
Um, but I think there's a lot more to it. And I think, you know, as we've talked about in previous episodes, so fascia wraps every um, nerve ending. So there's a huge relationship there between fascia and your nervous system, um, as well as the communication, which we've talked about. So your brain body communication at the subconscious level is often interpreting in your internal environment and your external environment, and then cueing um, either behaviors or programs inside your body or inside um, your brain or your mind that can affect you in terms of anxiety or feeling that myofascial pain, right? Feeling pain inside your soft tissue system instead of a joint um, that supposedly doesn't have an origin according to the Western medical model. But in my opinion, it does, there's always an origin. There's always a reason. There's always a, you know, I would say for most injuries that aren't a car accident or something like that, you know, a fall, something really acute and obvious, um, most of the time it's a slow buildup. Um, and that's true to me, whether it's low back pain, even if you tell me you bent down, you know, to pick up a book and your back just went out on you. I'm probably going to say, I think that was building for a long time and your body just couldn't take it anymore. And it finally had to tell you, I can't compensate anymore. Um, you got to do something to help me out. Um, and I believe that's true when it comes to soft tissue pain as well. There's something happening at that soft tissue level and it's had enough and it's trying to get your attention to address it. And if it's getting your attention to address it, I believe it can be addressed and I believe it can be reversed. So definitely a lot of implications here. Uh, and now I want to turn it over to you because I love talking to you guys about this. I'm definitely going to get in the comments. Uh, I can't wait to read your takeaways. So if you would share one or more takeaways, at least one from this video, I would love to read that. And then um, more importantly, I want to know how you're, how you're going to use this information, right? Because information isn't that useful unless you're actually going to put it to use. So uh, I would love to know how you're going to use one or more of these, but maybe just one so that it's actionable for you and it's not overwhelming, but use one of these facts right now in your life um, to move you towards either a goal that you're currently working on, whether it's problem solving an injury, um, optimizing your athletic performance, or just general health and mind-body optimization. So how are you going to use one of these facts or more um, to get to that goal? I would love to hear from you. Um, so I'm going to get in the comments and read them. So post below right now. Uh, and I'll see you there. And if you're brand new here, like I said um, earlier, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this episode and there's plenty more to come. Uh, if you hit that subscribe button, you won't miss any. I hope you'll stick around because we have more videos coming out than just these series on all things related to fascia, pain, um, injury, relief and prevention, and mind-body optimization, to name a few. Uh, and if you join my email community, I've got some free gifts for you and I share tips and resources and stories there that I don't anywhere else. So I hope you'll join my email community. You can do that by clicking the link below this video. And if you liked this video or you like this whole series, share it, share it on social media, share it with your friends and family, because I believe this information can help all of us live our best lives and what could be better than that? All right, so I'll see you next time. Bye.